The 2003 NHL Entry Draft is widely regarded as the best and deepest draft class of all time. I mean, when we just look at the first round, every single prospect played at least two games or more in the NHL, and we're going to see multiple Hall of Famers from just that first round alone. But the second round featured some amazing talent as well, featuring the likes of Shea Weber, Louis Erickson, Corey Crawford, and most notably, Patrice Bergeron. And almost immediately after he was drafted, Patrice Bergeron realized he needed some help. He ended up hiring a personal trainer and a power skating instructor to help him get to the NHL level. And that would pay dividends as just the next season after he was drafted in 2004, he ended up playing 71 games for the Bruins, getting 39 points. And next year would be in Providence of the AHL, getting 61 points in 68 games. And then the next season would be back with the Boston Bruins where he got 73 points in 81 games played in 2006 and the rest would be history. And if you could believe it, 13 centers were drafted before Patrice Bergeron in the 2003 draft. So how do these centers stack up to Patrice Bergeron nowadays, and where are these players in the year of 2020? Watch till the end for the entire list and all the Patrice Bergeron content, and hit that subscribe button as well for more hockey videos just like this one. And I mentioned it in the last video, but apparently 63% of you guys that have watched the channel over the last month are not subscribed. So get on that. We'd love to have you in the Grab Gang and love to have you in this community. And without further ado, we're gonna get to the players drafted right before Patrice Bergeron. He was at 45th overall, and the before center, or the last center that was drafted before him, was at number 43. And the 43rd overall pick by the San Jose Sharks would end up being Josh Hennessy. Now, he ended up playing 23 games in the NHL, and funny enough, he was traded for, or he was, he went to the Ottawa Senators organization, and then went to the Boston Bruins organization. He actually played a few games with the Boston Bruins and with Patrice Bergeron. He would mostly be an AHL player, and his final year in hockey would be 2018 with the Providence Bruins, but at the end of the day, just really couldn't stick in the NHL. A good AHL player, but really nothing more than that. Then going on to the player that was drafted right before him, and the 42nd overall pick, the New Jersey Devils select Peter Verana. Now, he would play 16 games as compared to Hennessy with 23, and Verana was an alright player. Uh, he ended up being drafted 42nd overall, 5'10 center, and he's a guy that's kind of went all over the place. He ended up being in 2003 with the Matt Halifax Mooseheads at the QMJHL. Pretty good QMJHL draft for centers. Uh, but he was mostly an AHL player throughout the 2010s. was mostly just going around from the KHL, the SHL, the Sheck League. And he's still in the Sheck League right now, being the captain for his team. He's got 14 points in 14 games played. I mean, he's still a beast. Not in the NHL, but hey, You'll take it where you can get it. Then going on to the next player that was drafted before Patrice Bergeron, he ended up being a Montreal Canadiens pick. 40th overall, we have, wait, yeah, Corey Urquhart. Now, Urquhart has a pretty interesting story. He's six foot three from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Again, 40th overall by Montreal. And he had a pretty solid QMJHL draft year, 78 game points in 71 games played. And he would mostly flip around some AHL systems here and there, would end up playing his last year in 2011 in the DEL, but actually he actually owns his own vegan kitchen restaurant in Halifax now, so uh, I guess he's making the dough somewhere else in that respect, but uh, it really did not turn out to do anything and he never ended up playing an NHL game. Going on to the next center that was drafted before Patrice Bergeron, here we have at number 38, the Florida Panthers select Camille Krebs. Now this is a really funny name, but Camille Krebs was a decent enough player, had a few pretty decent seasons with the Florida Panthers. He was a 6'2 forward, uh, had a few AHL seasons before really getting into the NHL, and again, was a pretty solid uh, bottom six guy for the Florida Panthers, but uh, his last season was in the DEL in 2018, where he got 22 points in 31 games. After his NHL career, he kind of skipped around from the KHL, the Liga, the Sheck League, kind of bounced around all over the place, but in the end, got 60 points in 232 two games. Obviously not Patrice Bergeron, but better than a guy like Corey Urquhart, uh, to say the least. And we can now go on to the next pick, basically right outside the first round. In the second round, the Pittsburgh Penguins, 32nd overall, selected Ryan Stone. Now, Ryan Stone, which is, was an entering case, he was dominant with the Brandon Wheat Kings in his junior days, but before he even played in junior, he had a pretty bad knee injury, and during his time with Brandon, would re-aggravate his injury, which would lead to him only playing two seasons in the NHL, one with the Pittsburgh Penguins, and one with the Edmonton 
Edmonton Oilers and would end up having his career cut short. But after his playing days, he would actually do pretty well for himself. He's a part-time owner with former defenseman Jonathan Webb, uh, part-time owner of a Calgary Oil and Gas Company, and he also owns his own hockey skill development company as well. So a pretty good entrepreneur, doesn't really stick in the NHL level, but overall doing pretty well for himself. Then going on to the next pick, at number 26, we have the beauty himself in Brian Boyle. Drafted by the LA Kings, of course, he would end up having a lengthy NHL career, still in the NHL to this day, the six foot six man himself. Last year, played with the Nat Florida Panthers, actually, got 15 points in 39 games played. But a New York Rangers legend, National Predators legend, New Jersey Devils legend, hey, Toronto Maple Leafs legend, we'll just throw that out there. Brian Boyle has had a pretty great career and definitely worth a first round pick. Speaking of worth, a first round pick at 24th overall the Philadelphia Flyers selected Mike Richards now Mike Richards would be unbelievable for them and it really started in his OHL draft year where he got 87 points in 67 games played and would be magnificent he would later transition that talent to the NHL and be great for Philadelphia mostly he would also play for the LA Kings and the Washington Capitals as well but a pretty fantastic offensive career for sure and just like Brian Boyle definitely worth a first round pick then going into the pick right after him Brian Burke of the Vancouver Canucks selected Ryan Kessler 23rd overall of course of course at least in his draft year a part of the University of Ohio and he was an interesting case as well had a great year in the NCAA in his draft year and would later prove to be worth that pick would be fantastic for Vancouver in the early 2010s and would be pretty good for Anaheim as well unfortunately those injury problems have nagged on him and it looks like he won't be able to play another NHL game so I'm hoping the best for Ryan Kessler that after his playing days he'll be as good as possible possible health wise and that we see him hopefully uh, be able to play with his kids and stuff like that so you don't want to see that type of stuff happen especially what Ryan Kessler has been through but that's a player that has just been so good in his NHL career then going on to 22nd overall and we have back to back to back center picks now at 22nd the Edmonton Oilers selected Mark Pouliot now Pouliot was a fascinating one because in his draft year he was solid in the queue got 73 points in 65 games but two years later in 2005 he would be insane getting 114 points in 70 games played but the point still stands he was never really able to stick at the NHL level especially with the Edmonton Oilers where his best season was in 2009 getting 20 points in 63 games played he was solid but just not a player that could really get that skill to the NHL level and stick full-time sadly as a first round pick and sadly especially for the Edmonton Oilers and at this point he's been playing in the NLA in the Swiss League since 2013 and is still playing this year in 2021 with the Swiss League getting six points in nine games played. And now we can go on to the four centers left in the 2003 draft, at least before Patrice Bergeron. Coming in at the 19th overall pick, the Anaheim Ducks selected Ryan Getzlav. Now, you might have heard of him. He's a pretty decent player. In 2003, ended up getting less than a point per game in the WHL with 68 points in 70 games. But the next year would be great, getting 75 points in 49 games, and the rest would be history. He would be just a mainstay. It, once he reached the NHL, he was not looking back. Still, of course, the cabinet for the Anaheim Ducks and is still one of the better players on that team even at his age a wonderful NHL career and one of the best players in the NHL in his prime then going on to the 15th overall pick the New York Islanders selected Robert Nilsson now Nilsson played center and wing throughout his career I'm going to count him as a center because hockey reference counts him as a center but he only played 252 games in the NHL got 118 points so when he was in the NHL he wasn't too bad offensively but that was a player that also just could not keep a consistent season going I mean we look at his first season Season, or in his draft year in 2003 he just switched from a bunch of different leagues and would still be in Sweden for a couple more years and would continue to kind of be in kind of an NHL funk he would go through multiple different franchises as well uh, but he ha played his last year in pro hockey in the NLA in 2018 got 26 points in 21 games which is pretty fantastic but he was just a player that could never stick at that North American level let alone that NHL level as well but then we go on to the 11th overall pick and it gets better with Jeff Carter of the Philadelphia Flyers. Now the Flyers did quite well here getting Jeff Carter and Mike Richards and Jeff Carter would be a fantastic player as well. Uh, would mostly be remembered for Philadelphia. We would also be in Columbus in that weird stint and then would go to the LA Kings and be fantastic for them. But this is a player that at his peak was just a wonderful offensive center with some defense to go around too. But this was a player that was a great pick at number 11 and would definitely become one of the best players of this 2003 draft. And then we can go on
on to the last center of this 2003 draft and the first center drafted second overall the Carolina Hurricanes selected Eric Stahl. Now Eric Stahl of course now with the Buffalo Sabres has had a wacky and lengthy NHL career. When we look back to what he was able to do in his draft year in the OHL got 98 points in 66 games played for the Petersburg Peets and this is a guy that has just worked his way up right after he was drafted went to the NHL for the Carolina Hurricanes 31 points in 81 games played. Of course win the cup for them in 2006 be a pretty big part of that team going into the future as well would be their captain too. He would of course go to the New York Rangers and to the Minnesota, Minnesota Wild and now trying to turn around the franchise of the Buffalo Sabres. So he's definitely one of the best players of this draft as well, at least in point totals. He right now has 1,021 points in 1,240 games played. So not doing too bad. And for a second overall pick, that's not the worst in the world. The Carolina Hurricanes will definitely take that. And honestly, in a 2003 redraft, besides maybe Marc-Andre Fleury, because it worked out pretty well for Pittsburgh, drafting him first overall, I'm really not sure how many players go ahead of Patrice Bergeron. I mean, I think the only forward option that really rivals him is potentially Ryan Getzlav. But even then, Getzlav's on the downtrend. Meanwhile, Patrice Bergeron is as good as ever, at least on offense and on defense, is still fantastic. He's still one of the better centers in the league. And this is a player that just continues to get better, continues to be a leader. And for the Boston Bruins to get him in the second round 45th overall no less worked out pretty well for them but that is gonna be it for today guys thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed this breakdown hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you're new and hit that notification bell as well to get notified on all the new videos comment down below your thoughts on this wacky 2003 draft what do you think about the centers that were drafted before him and what do you think about Patrice Bergeron the absolute legend himself make sure you share this video with your friends get it out there and click on this card as well for all actually no click on this card for my Nick Suzuki video I did the 12 players drafted before in the 2007 or 2017 draft so i think you'll be interested in that as well but my name is nathan absolutely appreciated i don't know why this recording took so long there was a bunch of clips that ended up because i didn't have enough cam memory on my camera it deleted like half of this stuff so i'm finally done i'm finally over and we're good thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video or stream goodbye mm -hmm.